Good afternoon and welcome to the show which celebrates all things craft. Yes, each week we explore a different type of craft and show you how you can join in yourself at home. From viral TikTok trends to traditional artistry skills, we want to open your eyes to the weird and creative world of crafts. This week, the Craftinoon team are focusing around the art of clay. So, let's take a look at what's happening on today's show. Firstly, grab a mop, because we'll be spilling the tea and having natter about the health benefits of crafting with clay with Anne Cochran. Find out how you can make clay pay when we talk to Cherie about her handmade jewellery. After that, we'll be chatting with Henry Moore from this year's Great Pottery Throwdown. Then a Craftinoon special, I'm sexy and I throw it, <laughs> who is naming these segments. And that's with a live demo from Danny showing us his skills on the pottery wheel. And if the idea of using a pottery wheel throws you off, then we are going to be taking a look at a simpler option over at Jenny Wren's Ceramic Cafe. That sounds right up my street, Liv. But first, let's welcome Anne Cochran. Hi Anne, it's so lovely to have you here today. Hi, thank you. Could you tell us a bit about what crafts you're into? Uh, yes, I uh, make um, cookware basically, but from clay and mud. Oh, wow. uh, I'll explain that in a little <laughs> bit in a minute. Uh, and jewellery. So, yeah. Wow, how do you make it out of the mud? Um, I went uh, to the Amazon rainforest in 2016 and saw how they made things there by hand. They, they don't have machinery or any of this stuff that we have over here. Um, so they just showed me how to make it basically. So uh, it's really good fun. Is and it, very difficult. Is it very, I was going to say, is it similar <laughs> to clay or is it tougher? Is it harder to <laughs> make something? I think it's quite similar. The Amazon's actually a lot of clay base. Um, so you kind of, you, you layer it more, I guess, with the clay and the mud. But yeah, still really good fun. When you were still in the UK before that, had you done work with clay or was it the first time when you no, got out there? No, I was corporate, living and working in London, stressed out, unhappy, all those things. And uh, one day I just thought, I've had enough. I'm going to take some time out and travel. Yeah, and <laughs> since finding things like working with clay or making jewellery, it's just changed my life completely. What are the benefits for you working with clay and making things? It's kind of slowed everything down. It's brought uh, a really great balance into my life. Uh, living and working in London, it was so fast. Every, uh, you know how it is. Yeah. Pretty similar in Manchester, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, and this just taught me how to focus, bring everything in. You have to pay attention to what your hands are doing all the time. You come out of your head. You learn to breathe, which is just really interesting. I find a lot of people, when you're working hard, you just don't breathe very well. Uh, and everything kind of runs together. So it's a, it's a whole experience. It's good. What would you say to others in the same situation that you were in that don't know how to take that first step into getting into working with clay and slowing down? I would be inclined to say just look for like a, a night school or a course, even just like watching stuff on YouTube, something that you can just watch how people work with it and even body language when you're working with clays and stuff like that, your body language is completely different. Um, so just yeah find a way even if it's just watching it at first and has it changed how you craft now since you've come back uh, yes absolutely um, I primarily make jewelry now uh, which is different but it's it's given me the understanding of how when you're working with something you have to really be involved the outside world disappears and you focus on what you do and it's very meditative for me um, so if I get stressed out at all here uh, out come my materials and it's changed everything. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much Thank for speaking you. to us today, Anne. Clay is something that can create more than just beautiful pottery pieces. Over the past year, the popularity in polymer clay earrings has skyrocketed, with many people looking for something fun to do that also contributes to sustainable fashion. And that's exactly what led our next guest, Cherie, to start her business. She's going to walk us through how she makes her gorgeous earrings. Hi girls, thank you so much for having me. I'm going to be showing you everything I do behind the scenes of my business, from making the earrings, to photographing them, to marketing them, and then finally shipping them off to customers. 
I started my business during the pandemic in July 2020 when I was unfortunately not employed as a way to stay creative and to keep me busy. This particular pair of earrings that I'm making are great as I can use scrap clay from other pairs of earrings I've made. Uh, these are also made from scrap clay. These are a marbling texture of using a couple of different grey tones and whites. For this style of earrings I roll the clay into thin logs, I then wrap those logs in a sheet of thin white polymer clay, I then roll all of those canes together and slice them up into equal sizes and roll them out flat. I then pass them through my pasta machine to make sure they're really really stuck together. I can then cut my cutters out into whatever shapes I want. Once my earrings are out of the oven I sand and buff the edges to give them a really smooth beautiful finish. I also then drill the holes for my jump rings to go through. I then adhese my earring posts onto the back of the earrings. For this I'm using super glue. I love that I can be creative and make whatever I want. I'm also up for making custom earrings. I love it when people request earrings. So if people want daisies I can make them custom daisies or for example some boobs. <laughs> now that the earrings are made it's time to take the photos. I like to create a flat lay that's really super eye-catching. So at the moment I'm using an old book with some hand-dried petals and other plants around the outside. Put my earrings in the middle any way I want and then I can take any photos that I want from any angles and I always try and use natural light. Next up is marketing. I market through social media and I built my website on Wix. Very good, very easy. What I do is I upload all the details to my Wix site and I choose the best photo to be the main photo, which is the one that the customer sees first. Then I write a catchy description and title, add the price, any other information like quantities or variations, and then I'm ready to post that and that's up on my website. I've always found it difficult to price my earrings because you have to work out the material cost, the time taken cost, the skill level cost, and then a profit margin on top of that to make sure that you can keep turning over your business. You have to create a profit margin. Now this is really, really, really up to you and it can change per pair of earrings, but a good place to start is 10% to add to make sure that you are getting some money from your earrings and they're not just paying for themselves. Then I go to Instagram and I post a beautiful picture of my photo in my main feed of my product. I use so many hashtags to try and reach as many different audience members as I possibly can who aren't already following me. It's very important to use the big hashtags that everyone uses to get into that category, but it's much more important to really focus down your hashtags into things that are very specific to you. Once all of that's done I just wait for my customers to flow into my website and buy my earrings. I always ship them with care and they are always 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 well packed. I've popped some earrings in the post to say a thank you to you lovely girlies for supporting small businesses. Thank you. Bye! Oh, that was so amazing. I couldn't help myself. I just had to put them in straight away. <gasps> they're so nice. What do you think of mine? Did they suit me? Oh, I love them. Stunning. <laughs> and the fact that they're all unique and one of a kind just makes it all that more special. I know. You never know how they're going to come out of the oven. So make sure you tag us in any unique crafting creations. Speaking of waiting on final results, Henry Moore from this year's Great Pottery Throwdown will be talking to us about how to create unique and creative pieces under pressure. Let's get ready to spill some more tea. Hi Henry, thank you so much for joining us on this lovely crafting noon. Hello. When did you start pottery and who inspired you to give it a go? Um, I started pottery in my third year of university. So I taught myself how to throw on a kick wheel in the back of the studio. And that's kind of where I started. So I don't really know if anyone in particular inspired me. It was more just I'm really stressed out and need an escape. So that's what I did. What was it like walking in on the very first day of the Great Pottery Throwdown? Did you ever think you'd be doing pottery on TV? So, yeah, my family and my friends and my girlfriend were all like, oh, you should do it, you should do it, you should. And I was like, no, I'm not good enough. No way, no way, no way. And then when it all sort of sunk into me, when I understood what was going on, was when I walked in on day one, right? And everyone had all the other potters, I'd met all the other potters and we all walked in, we were just, dropped our stuff on our desks and they had these huge great toolboxes that they dropped on and then they like unfolded and had like multiple shelves in with all these tools. I was like, wow. And I went to my desk and I put this little like wrap on the table and unraveled it. And the only thing in there was one singular sharp teaspoon. That was the only thing I brought to that damn show. And everyone else had these huge great, and I was like, nah, man, maybe I don't belong here. Maybe this was a bad decision. But yeah, so I was very scared. I was very scared, but it was good fun. Would you consider making a pot punk branded spoon tool anytime soon? Well, funny you should ask, actually, because I have been thinking about releasing a set of pot punk potter's spoons. So special spoons specifically made for pottery. 
best tool ever. Use it for everything. I carve those specific things. I trim with it. I use it for mold making. I do everything with that spoon. I mean, I nicked it from the kitchen. My mum still doesn't know that this is where it is. So she'll find out now. And the great thing is, is if it breaks, it's like 60p for another one. Less than 60p. So I kind of want to offer that to other people um, and get other people on the like, on the hype train for spoons. As a viewer watching the show, there was a lot of tension as to whether the items would survive the kiln or not. How did you cope with this pressure? And was it as tense in real life as it was watching from the sofa? Yeah, it's really tense, like unbelievably so. Quickly, quickly, hurry up! <laughs> you just suddenly realise that you spent like X amount of time making these pots and you're like, oh, this is going to be fine. This is all going to go flawlessly and you're super stressed out and you know that if you don't get it right and it does explode, there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to come back for the next episode and that'll be it. Which is a real shame because it's really fun to be there. Yeah, it was really, really stressful. And you just, as soon as you put it in the kiln, you're like, oh man, this is, this is not gonna go well. And I just had it in my head that if it all breaks and if everything explodes, that at least I had a good time up until now and everything's just, I just look at the positives. And that's all I was thinking about, so I didn't get too stressed out. Thank you so much for speaking to us today, Henry. You hope you have a lovely craft. Lovely, lovely, Jubbly. I'll catch you later. Bye, bye. See you later, kids. If you want to see more sneak peeks into what Henry has in store, head over to our social media pages. You might even see another exclusive item he's working on. I'm sexy and I know it. We are very lucky to have Danny here with us today to show us how he creates a moon jar. I am so excited to see this. Hi Danny, can you walk us through what you're doing? Okay, so today I'm making a moon jar, which is a, a Korean vessel, traditional Korean vessel. And uh, I'll show you step by step how we do it. So Perfect. you basically want all your clay to be positioned in the very center of the wheel. So just using a bit of pressure and always keeping your hands a bit wet. Are you pushing on it quite hard or lightly? Um, yeah, you've got to use quite a bit of force in the beginning, yeah. You've kind of got to tell it what to do. So now I've more or less got a centre dome. Um, so the clay is kind of evenly distributed. The next I think it's so satisfying to watch. Yeah. It is, it's a little... I feel relaxed watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is, it's a lovely feeling. Um, it's quite addictive, really. Yeah. yeah. It can be quite frustrating, you know, when things don't go well. But you always keep doing it. Are you creating a well in the centre now? Um, yeah, so I'm just opening out um, the lump of clay. And what I'm doing is I'm making this ring here is, is now the walls of the pot. So I'm going to pull it up. And then just flattening the base out and compressing all the clay. And so, we, yeah, are you just bringing it up through the sides now? Like yeah, so the height? now I've got the walls ready. I'm, I just prepare it at the bottom here, I make a little ledge with the side of my knuckle. And um, you're not really squeezing it, but you're using a bit of pressure and just guiding it upwards. Um, and you want to do it in a couple of steps, really. You don't want to do it too quickly. And you want to stop it getting too wide as well, because it always wants to open up. Like, have you got any tips on where to start with pottery as well? Is there a different design you should do first? Um, well, there's two basic forms really. There's a cylinder and a bowl, and most things, you know, stem off from that. Yeah, yeah. So th this begins as as a cylindrical form, and then you alter it afterwards. Well, yeah, it's quickly starting to take shape, isn't it? It just suddenly goes up. Yeah, it does. Uh, so I'll use one of my tools now. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a rib, I call it a rib. And it used to be a rusty blade, like a saw blade, mm -hmm. which couldn't use anymore. But for <laughs> this... Uh, is that smoothing it off or creating the shape? Uh, a bit of both. It can kind of calm it down. Like, if it's a bit wobbly, you can kind of stabilise it a little bit but it also kind of smooths up the shape. So I'll try and use this one now. This is a throwing stick, mm -hmm. so it's got a little hook on it, and you just 
push out the shape a little bit more when you can't reach inside. Right. It's yeah. like an extension. So you can probably see what's happening better than me. Yeah, I, I can see. Yeah, yeah, like a little... It goes white, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Are all the tools multi-purpose or is this specifically designed to go through the middle like that? You can use pretty much anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really anything awesome. you've got. Some, sometimes, you, can, you know, you can't be bothered getting off the wheels, so you just grab yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your the glasses. Your glasses, TV remote. <laughs> yeah. It's looking like it's wobbling. Sometimes you've got to quit while you're ahead, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After it's come off the wheel and it's dried out, you would turn it as well, so you change the shape then. Okay. You can really crisp up the shape. You really want like a really nice cu mm. curved shape. I think I'm probably not going to be able to take this much further. <laughs> it's thrilling though, you know, seeing how far you can take mm. it. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I just, oh, I just want it a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. That'll do, I think. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it looks great oh, to no, us. Oh, no, it's amazing. Really I found it very therapeutic. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was so concentrated. <laughs> good, good. So oh. I might go home and make my own moon yeah, yeah. jar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, thank you so much, Danny, for doing that for oh, us no today. Oh, no problem, yeah, anytime. Yeah. And I'm all for getting stuck in and giving that a go myself. But for the people who want to have their own unique pottery without the hard graft, this next segment is for you. I had the pleasure of going to a pottery cafe to try out a simpler way of enjoying clay crafts. Oh, can't wait to see what you did, Liv. I'm in the heart of Stockton Heath at Jenny Wren's Pottery Cafe, where you can enjoy a cup of tea or a cup of coffee whilst painting your very own pottery. Let's go inside to speak to Jenny herself to find out even more. Hi, Jenny. Can you walk me through what I do at this pottery cafe? Of course. So, in front of you, you've got your paint carousel with all the colours, and then this is your colour chart. When you use these paints, when you put them in the kiln, they change colour. So, we always give you this to show what it actually looks like when it's been in the kiln. So, you've got your own little palette here. Pick your colours and go for it. Perfect. Uh, what would you say to someone like me who's never been here before? Just relax and go for it. A lot of people come here and they just don't think that they can do it or, you know, they've been dragged by the partner <laughs> or the kids and just say, just go for it. <laughs> what you think you've done, it'll be even better when it comes out of the kiln. You'd be really pleasantly surprised. It just gets them off the phones, you know, everyone's on the phones and on yeah. social media and this is just something that they can do and, and relax. And... So it's like a social media detox. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. So, but the only thing is the best way to advertise it all is social, social media. media. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, it would be great if people just turned the phones off for five yeah. minutes and actually did this. So obviously we've got loads of models here. Have you ever tried actually making something from scratch out of clay? Uh, yeah, I'm actually, that's what I'm painting. Oh, is it? Yeah, I didn't yes. ask you. I'm too busy with that. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. So I'm just uh, made a little play. It was something that I was doing during lockdown mm -hmm. and one of the days when I was feeling a bit fed up, I came in here, rolled out some clay and uh, tried to make something. Um, so I'm gonna, I've fired it now so that it's bisque mm -hmm. and then I'll paint it and glaze it and it'll be ready to use. Oh, amazing. Maybe put some cakes on it. So what do you think this does for people's mental health and stuff? Uh, I think it's really relaxing. Mm -hmm. I always say to people, well, a lot of people when they've been painting here, at the end, they say how nice they feel. It's like a massage. Yeah, I was about to say, it's very, it seems quite therapeutic. Yeah, it is. You kind of zone out and just concentrate on what you're doing. Yeah. And what is your favourite part about running this cafe? Seeing the start uh, item, mm -hmm. seeing how it looks when it comes out the kiln, uh, and seeing people's faces when they collect it. Yeah. Because they're just really surprised at how it looks. Well, I think I'm all done with my pig now. What do you think? It looks amazing. Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Have you enjoyed it? I have. I've really enjoyed oh, it. Yeah. Good. I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to be here all day <laughs> with this one. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I just painted my pig and I can't wait to go and pick it up again next week. It's been so nice to relax, have a social media detox and paint and drink coffee. It's not just for kids and families, it's people like me and you too. I'll see you there in May. 
Oh, well, I'm really jealous now. I wish I had the relaxing day painted. <laughs> Look how my pig turned out. <gasps> oh my God, it's all glazed. I, I love it. No, I absolutely loved it. I had the time of my life. I'll definitely be going back. Oh, it's super <laughs> cute. And make sure you head over to Jenny Wren's when it's back open. Tag us in your Craftoon creations at Craftoon BBC on Instagram. And at Craftoon on TikTok. What a jam-packed show we've had today, Jemima. Oh, we certainly have. And we hope we've sparked some inspiration for your next Craftoon. But before we go, let's take a look at some of the things you've made when you had a Craftoon with clay. Oh, they're really cute oh. there. <laughs> Join us next week when we'll be looking at the prickly art of needle felting. See you next time. Bye. Bye.